Yeah. Yeah. Family survived the genocide so, so we could be here Now we enterprise the aftermath What in the shame Living the revolution till we catch What in the brain And uh. even then my spirit will return in heavenly form The Department of Defense announced Friday that it had changed the status of Army Sergeant Troy D. David Jenkins, 25, from wounded in action to died of wounds received in action. During Operation Iraqi Freedom, Sergeant Jenkins was remembered Friday as a hero. His death is a direct result of the false flag operation that occurred on our soil September 11, 2001. He is one of thousands that I will be paying my respects to this weekend and this Monday. Respect. This word should describe the 9-11 truth movement. We investigate, we research, we discuss, and we convene. We do this in search of the truth so that we may respect the fallen, the human beings that are not here today to stand with us. A year ago this weekend, Dylan, Jason, and I came here to New York City. We stayed in an apartment down in Brooklyn. I slept on the floor, Dylan also on the floor. We had a camera and an idea of seeing what happened at Ground Zero. We had very little money and we're fighting to get loose change too done by our deadline. We went to Ground Zero where we met with slander and ridicule. The presence of the 9-11 truthers was minimal, scattered, and unorganized. The thoughts I had was, wow, we have a way, way long way to go. Today we are winning the war on truth. We are making a direct impact. Many have said to step down and not to attend our rally at Ground Zero this Monday. They say our presence is not wanted and it is not the time. I could not agree more. Our presence is going to be disturbing. Our presence is going to upset people and is going to upset the grieving. But I say this, we must do something. We can no longer idle and linger on our blogs and in our churches. We must bring this to the people firsthand. We must take this to the streets. If we were to let this, account, this event pass with no effort to educate the masses, then we have lost. During this monumental weekend, we must remember to step back, never force our information on the grieving. These are today's victims. bottom of that pit, seven floors down. It took them a week to find it. It was molten steel for another two weeks. And they're saying, where did this molten steel come from? What's that? I'll tell you why. To pass the Patriot Act, which was written before this event took place. It was written by Bob Graham to pass the Patriot Act, to declare war on terror and never ending war. This is their wet dream. To, to declare war on Afghanistan, to declare war on Iraq, to declare war on Iran. This is the, and to have ultimately one world government. This is the greatest psychological attack in the history of humanity. All the way back. It's great, it's invigorating me with all these wonderful people. In search of the truth, exposing the real terrorist. We love America too. That, that hole in the ground is still useful. They had a big ceremony yesterday. Uh, Bush laid a wreath there, but uh, if, you know that that building wasn't useful to have it laying around all destroyed. You know what what happened there? So they rebuilt it really really quick. What do you think of the war on terror? I think it's a fraud. I think we've been set up. I think uh, I think the world's been set up, and we're starting to wake up to realize how set up we are. And you just have to ask the question: Who's who's winning from this war on terror? And you can find out uh, who started it. And it all started with 9-11. And if you look honestly at it, it becomes very clear that guy in a cave in, Af in Afghanistan uh, and, you know, Muslim hijackers of the box cutters did not do this. And it's almost so blatant that uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to fathom. It's the big lie. It's, it's so in your face that they couldn't have done it, that it's almost impossible. You either believe it or you don't. And once you do, it's a hard step to take. And then once you take that step, you got to come out. They can only steal those elections. Brian Canisaro, Michael Canty, Louis Anthony Caparici, Jonathan Neff Capello, James Christopher Capello, Here, uh, Not bad. I had the DVDs and ran out quickly, like water. 
So, so uh, what would you say the the response has been like 50-50 uh, for investigating the truth, or? Um, I think New Yorkers are more aware than other people. Um, and if you go into poorer neighborhoods, if you go into the Bronx, if you go into Brooklyn, people are much more receptive to this material than in Manhattan. Than in Manhattan. So financially, they already know that the, the government lies to them. The more well off you are, the less the more likely. likely you are to believe in the government's story. <laughs> Information about 9/11. Information about 9-11. Well, what's the general response been? Uh, there's been some animosity, uh, which I can understand, and um, from people who are affected, you know. But generally speaking, people have approached me asking for the DVD, and, and I always respond with, do you have questions? Because I'm knowledgeable about the science and everything behind it. And, and the response is overwhelmingly positive as to the beliefs of what happened that day. Um, so it's been good. I think we're making a difference. And what do you think of the war on terror? Um, I think that it's it's not justified. I think that if, if what we're here for uh, proves to be true and can be found to be true, that changes the entire game. I think the war on terror is just a an illusion. Illusion is the best way to put it a pipeline through Afghanistan. I want to know why the FBI on this website does not have Osama bin Laden as wanted for the 9-11 attacks. He's wanted for the embassy bombings in Africa. He's not wanted for the 9-11 attacks. I want to know why FBI informants were the landlords of the hijackers, some of them on 9-11. I want to know why some of the hijackers themselves were alleged to have trained at US military bases. I want to know why some of the hijackers are alleged to be alive according to the uh, England's BBC. George grandfather was the top Nazi in the U.S. Well, it's Bitzer's office and also it's the office of uh, Larry Silverstein. Well, Larry Silverstein is a gentleman that only put a, a little bit of 100 million down on a 90 year, nine year lease in, in January of 2001, uh, right one month before or a couple months before the September 11th and he took out a huge insurance policy on uh, the World Trade Center complex in which he collected. And then uh, Elliot Spitzer is the current Attorney General of the State of New York, and he's the one that should be uh, investigating all the unanswered questions regarding the events of September 11th. 9-11 was an inside job! 9-11 was an inside job! What do you think of these guys? I think they're very brave. I really do. I think they're doing a great job. Bringing out the truth. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. What do you think of these guys? For the cops? You guys? Well, you aren't speaking the truth. And which one? We all know that was the truth from day one. Yes. It don't take a, um, you know what I'm saying? A genius to figure it out. I'll tell somebody saying it. They used to call us communists for fighting America. Now they call us terrorists to spread hysteria. Let me just say this. Let me just say this without sounding redundant. Who the f really gains the most from blowing up London? And who really made Bin Laden the man that he is? The CIA and Saudi Arabia did. But that's the past and the future is here. Iraq was a design. So for some people, the future is clear. A Christmas tree pyramid with the star as an eye. Like a satellite in orbit watching me from the sky. Every country wants a piece of the American pie. But that means you have to co-sign America's lies. So you can criticize human rights in Cuba and China, but not in Israel, the Philippines, and places you find them. That are allies of the country I live in. 
whose clothes are made by slave labor, women and children. Yeah, I know at some point we're all part of that hypocrisy too, but I don't front like it's democracy, Duke. I don't pretend troops are peacekeepers that don't murder and they don't create colonies whose government service moving them with our economics like we share the tectonic plates in your vest are no good, nigga. The weapons are sonic. The war on terror evolved like strands of the chronic from the propaganda to the weapons that's biologic. But remember that the system can never stop what's been set into motion like volcanic eruptions on the floor of the ocean. My purpose is to burst through the surface, immersed in the smoldering lava from verses, surrounded by murder mommies, not bitches that's worthless. I cut chicken heads off like hatches and curses. Weapons I purchase make homeland security nervous. I run pockets and purses like subway searches. I'm robbing Masonic temples disguised as churches. I'm busy. Hold on. I'm busy. I'll leave that one for you to interpret. You serpents of merchants of military industry murder. The beef is heating up like the mad cow in your burger. Fathom the cause of cattle cannibalism. Factory farms are like a fucking animal prison. A microcosm of Adam Smith's capitalism. That's America's real religion. Giving that some walk of the beast to the Christians. The destruction of Babylon. Motherfucker, that's my mission. Make some motherfucking noise, New York City.